Welcome back. This week, as we take on a uh, topic in our through our devotions, uh, little devotionals here, that is uh, growing more and more in the world around us. How to overcome despair, and we we see people of all ages dealing with this topic, uh, dealing with the the struggles of life and the pressures. Uh, many of them are trying to do this without the Lord, but speaking to you who know the Lord, the the. Despair can, can often try to creep into the heart when our perspective changes, when our eyes are come off of Jesus Christ, when the, uh, when the sufferings around us become very intense. Uh, so I just want to share with you just a couple insights today on how do we overcome despair. And again, everything comes back to how we see our God, how we, you know, how, how we, how deep our relationship is with him, how, how uh, impactful his word is in our life. Are we seeking to, to put on the things he's, he's commanded us to put on or to, to do the things that he's asked us to do? But above all, are we seeking to grow the relationship with our great Lord and Savior? Uh, even, when, you know, even when we don't feel like it in our human <laughs> aspect uh, of things as we go or even when we uh, can't see the the big picture in front of us or the small picture in front of us and things seem to be blocked for now but I just want to give you some a few a few perhaps moments uh, today for you to contemplate and think about and the first is uh, starting off as we as we go here is in Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30 when the Lord says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Perhaps, for our first perhaps moment today, perhaps despair is, is trying to creep in because we're holding on to to things that we should never hold on to and we are not finding rest as we are called to in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Perhaps we have forgotten that in Jesus' life when he was walking on the earth here, he found his rest in his prayer time and his relationship with his father when he separated uh, from the disciples and, and just spent time with those that he loved. Perhaps that is what you and I need today. Maybe that's that's what uh, is an aspect that you're missing. When the Lord says, the Lord Jesus tells us to all who labor and are heavy laden, despair only comes when you are heavy laden either about uh, events that are going on, worry, anxiety, uh, or, or unrepentant sin that you're holding on to and it is affecting your entire life as the Lord tells us it, it will. But in those moments where it seems like enemies are crashing down all around us uh, when we struggle with our, our friends or family or colleagues or uh, you know things at work or wh whatever the case may be uh, you know there's no great there's no greater study than the life of David as he was being chased around all over the place uh, <laughs> when it came to despair and he wanted to give up over and over and over again but I just want to read Psalm chapter 30. It says, I will extol you, O Lord. This is the song of dedication at the house of David. It's the, it's the, bless, the blessedness of, of answered prayer because I believe that in overcoming despair especially is where we need to keep track of God's work for just for our recognition, not, not to... <laughs> Not for God to look upon, but for our recognition and to remember that God is working and revealing himself all along the way. It says, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now in my prosperity I said I shall never be moved, and Lord, by your favor you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, and I was troubled. 
I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. You can, you can see, you can hear the words that are coming out from David as he is praising the Lord, but also, but also recognizing that the, he is, uh, he is able to praise him because he cried out and the Lord answered. He sought him greatly and the Lord answered and was always there. This is in, in and he's letting all of his, his emotions go at this point in time when he says, when there is, or what profit is there in my blood? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Does the Lord to cry out for me? I long to praise you. I long to help you. And it's that, that relative or, or that, uh, uh, is that revealing moment in here in verse five, when he says, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life and weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You may struggle and weep and pour out your heart today, and tomorrow you may be lifted up by the grace and mercy of our Lord God. He may be anger at or he may be angry at your at your sin before him, but when you confess and repent, you may be rejoicing and joy in the morning. There is a great recognition when it comes to this that no matter what happens, that he longs in the end to to praise the lord and that god's glory may be seen in his life and he may be able to glorify his lord his savior his deliverer his provider his everything that is a great perspective that we need to keep in mind as a biblical perspective that we need to keep in mind when it appears that the lord has turned his back or when it appears that we can't see him uh, directly in front of us or we just don't feel that presence of God, because everybody is about the feelings of 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 themselves uh, nowadays, instead of the faithful reliance upon the Lord. When those things try to take place and overcome your perspective and your vision, the promises that God has given you, and and knowing that He is walking with you through every step of the way, when those things come, you have to have this big picture perspective. You have to understand that when you cry out to the Lord, the Lord longs to answer you. When you cry out before him, it is a cleansing of the heart and mind for the complete reliance dependence upon your Lord and Savior. You fight despair with hope, and there is no hope found outside of Jesus Christ. And though you may be, feel like you are wandering in, in different times, hope never fades, for Jesus Christ is eternal, and he has already won the victory. He has bought you with his own blood. What can take you away from his presence? We are on this earth for just a brief, short period of time. It doesn't seem like it when we're going through these, these moments, but if we struggle for a little bit and have joy for all of eternity, is it not better to remember who our God is than to chase after all of that suffering and despair that leads us away from eternal hope. I think of, of 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4, when Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and he says, We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then, death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore we do not lose heart. 
even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We work for the eternal. We may be hard-pressed, we may be crushed, but never do we give in to despair because we will be raised and resurrected. We will be given life forevermore with our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is the gift of grace that God has bestowed. It is the same faith. Though the, the body is struggling, though the mind has its problems, uh, well, really every day we struggle with, with these things. Though our affliction is light, and we have to remember, we have to remember some, some individuals face great adversity. I mean, it's for a short period of time, for eternity, it does not even compare. The presence of God, being in the presence of God, does not even compare to the afflictions that we face here in this earth. The, the, the problem is, are we being afflicted for the right reasons or are we being afflicted for our stubbornness, uh, disobedience uh, to the word of God, to the Lord God? Or are we being afflicted uh, for the use of God's kingdom by just being sons and daughters to our, our, uh, our great heavenly father? That is the great question. But when you take your eyes off of the Lord Jesus Christ, everything becomes on the temporal that is around us, on the earthly things and not on the eternal things. The afflictions become much heavier in that case. Right? The pain feels so much greater. The weight feels so much heavier when we forget. Again, Matthew chapter 11, when he says, All you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Are we seeking that rest? Right? Do, do you remember and believe that Jesus Christ is your eternal hope? How do you overcome despair? You do not let go of your God. I think of Job. I think of Job. Uh, it's, uh, it's the verse. Uh, it just continues to, to ring time and time again. It says, though you slay me, I will still follow you. And though you slay me, I will still believe. Though you slay me, no matter what happens, no matter how difficult things may appear, I will not deny you. I will continue to love and follow you. You are a faithful and trustworthy God. See, in Hebrews chapter 6, if I were to leave you with some, some final words today, in verses 19 and 20, it starts off with this, this hope. It is the hope of Jesus Christ. It is the hope of our Lord and Savior. It is the hope that is found in our high priest and intercessor. It says, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus having, becoming, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. This hope we have an anchor of the soul. You are not lost. You are tied. You are bought. You are sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of our, our Lord God. It is sure. It is steadfast because God himself, Jesus Christ himself, stands at the right hand of the Father making intercession for his, for his uh, children, for his brethren. That is a great hope that cannot be taken away from anything Satan does. It cannot be taken away from, from any of the hardships you face here on this earth. You have been sealed by God himself as he chose to do so. And nothing can break the bonds that he has created. Nothing can, can change that blood-bought gift that he has given you. We have a great high priest. How do we overcome despair? We lean on our Lord God. We cry out to him as David did, and we follow him. And he says, wherever we should go, there's going to be times of struggle. There's going to be sometimes longer than what we desire, I, I am sure. Um, from the human side of things, I, I, I am sure. But we continue to be faithful. For God says, you will be. You will be with me in eternity. And that is where we all desire to be. Or at least I hope that is your desire today. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I just, I pray 
I pray for each one listening here today that they would not give in to the battle of despair. That they would remember their hope is forever. It is eternal. It is an anchor for their soul. It is the living God, Jesus Christ, who has freed them from bondage, who has paid the penalty for their sin, who has given them joy and hope forevermore. Father, even though they may not understand everything that is going on in their life, may they continue to lean and trust you, for you are trustworthy. You are faithful. You are great. You are a mighty God. There is only one God. It is you. Lord, we praise you. Father, may we lean and walk obedient to your word, fighting all of those things which Satan uses to distract us from keeping our eyes upon you. We fight for those things that are not seen yet, but one day we'll be in your presence forevermore. Lord, we can't wait for that day. And we just ask for your mighty work in their heart and life and in mine as well. Uh, keep pressing forward for the prize ahead. Father, for the salvation of many, for your glory and honor. Lord, we just ask this in your holy name. Amen. Do not give in. You are not crushed. You are not... Uh, you are not done. Until the Lord takes you home. There is hope with every step. There is hope with every breath. For God is sovereign and controls everything. We'll see you next week.